Hello guys! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Maya and I'm so happy to have you with me on this beautiful day. So today, I actually just thought of this kind of on a whim, so I hope you guys enjoy it, but I want to talk about confidence. Ooh, the C word and it's not even the bad one. That was lame. Anyways, um, I want to talk about confidence, how I have kind of learned how to deal with, you know, ebbs and flows of confidence throughout my life. I have seen actually a few YouTubers do this. They were like not at the same time at all, but I saw Jackie Ina do a recent video on this. And then I also have seen Raw Beauty Christie do videos on this, as well as like Nicole Concilio, Sylvia Ghani. Those are like kind of the main girls that I watch personally. And so... I was just thinking I kind of wanted to do that as well, if that's okay with you guys. So I kind of want to get ready. I'm not going to be really focusing on the products at all. I'll link them all down below per use. I kind of wanted to sit down and talk about kind of my, you know, how I've dealt with, you know, lack of confidence or, you know, problems with confidence in the past. I feel like in the last year or so I have kind of you know, seen the light at the end of the tunnel and I've seen where my confidence could be and where it kind of lacked before. So before I go on a long whim, I think I should probably start doing my makeup. I'm just gonna start off with some primer. That was aggressive. Okay, so confidence. I mean, I feel like everyone knows what confidence is, but like, I feel like lately, the concept of confidence has been so skewed and I'm not really sure as to like what made it skewed but I feel like in at least the last 10 years what confidence is was not what it was when I was at least growing up. When I was growing up there was like YouTube and there was you know Facebook mostly. Um, it wasn't until maybe like high school that I think Instagram became like as big as it is and even now it like wasn't like when I was in high school I was at 2011 to 2015 it was like not at all what it is now like there weren't paid influencers there weren't like Instagrammers like people that actually legitimately get paid to do Instagram. And I feel like along with kind of like the surge in social media came a surge of different ways to view confidence. Technical definition, feeling of reassurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own abilities and qualities. It, I feel like social media definitely put confidence kind of in front of the world. Now more than ever, people are focusing on how to show the world that they are confident. More than ever now, it's become like, oh, confidence equals popularity, maybe on social media. Confidence equals looking a particular way. But I feel like we're kind of lacking the ability to understand that confidence is all about how one views oneself. And unless you know how to read minds, you don't know anyone else's confidence but yourself. That my confidence, like as a ch like growing up as a kid, was like fine. I had confidence problems when it came to like school and when it came to tennis. So, for those of you who do not know, um, I was a tennis player for 16 years. A lot of my confidence kind of like problems stemmed from not believing in myself tennis wise ability. I always felt like I wasn't good enough in tennis. Like my abilities were never good enough. Like I never just hit the like level I wanted to hit. Of course I had a lot of injuries along the way. I had a lot of like really crappy things happen to me. Of course, as I got older, a lot more problems, not problems, but things I became self-conscious about came to the surface. I think I have mentioned this in a previous video, but I, when I was eight years old, about around eight, I was in fourth grade, I believe, fourth or fifth grade. So I think it was like eight or nine years old. 
I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder as well as panic disorder. Back when I was so young, like I remember just being so terrified of everything, like so scared of just like the unknown, like dying, stuff like that. And so, you know, my confidence then wasn't great either because I was so anxious, like such an anxious, like poor little soul I was like, and I'm so grateful that my parents recognized that and you know took me to therapy at a super young age anxiety can really be like debilitating at times anxiety really affects my confidence there's like different things for example that have given me anxiety over the years and it's changed like every huge milestone i would say in high school particularly my confidence was okay but i feel like any person that age really lacks like just knowing themselves i do not think i knew myself in high school i think that i was trying to please people trying to please like the friend group i was a part of trying to like fit in with the friend group i was a part of i literally don't feel like i knew who i was until i was probably in college and even then i feel like with each friend group I was a part of, I was trying to please that friend group and do what that friend group was doing. And it wasn't until really recently that I was like, I feel like I actually know who I am now. The fact that I literally don't feel like I've like known myself like fully, fully, fully until just recently is like kind of a crazy idea. You know, like you think you know yourself, you think you know like who you are and what you're capable of but like I literally feel like pretty much up until probably my like senior year of college I think I started realizing this was like I really don't think I was ever like truly myself and I feel like when you're not truly yourself then you don't have confidence and a lot of things in college you know really made me lack confidence for example um, I wasn't performing as well as I once did in high school, like academic wise. I also had a very tumultuous relationship with tennis. So in college, I was cheated on and you know, you would think that by now I would be over it, but it's like that confidence in like who I was, was really diminished. And it wasn't even because of the boy, like at all, like it's not, it has nothing to do with the boy. It has to do with the fact that like literally someone took my trust. Just like, yeah, you know what? I don't want to respect you like that. And that was like crazy because I had never really gotten cheated on before ever. I don't know who wouldn't kind of like have a hit to their confidence after being cheated on. I don't know who would be like cool with it. Just a lot of things were happening in college. And what was important to me in college was that I was going to leave college a more well-roundedly confident person than I was going in. And I think 100% I did fulfill that. Like that was kind of one of my goals. Tell you the truth, like it took a lot to get there. I'm going to do one eye off of camera and then come back and do the other one but i do want to kind of just like gather my thoughts and do my makeup a little bit off camera because i don't want to just like keep on rambling okay so. guys so i'm back i did one eye off camera i did a lavender halo eye lavender is my favorite color so i hope you guys like it pretty much the point that i was trying to make was i think that as you are getting older maturing changing different parts of your life become either you know kind of you gain confidence or you lose some confidence so just there's people along the way that i feel like were there to teach me lessons for instance my ex was there to teach me that just because something shitty like getting cheated on happened to me doesn't mean that i'm never going to find love or find you know someone to you know share my life with like that's never the case like just because you got knocked down once doesn't mean you're gonna get knocked down again um 
you know, and I had some friends in high school and some friends in college that, you know, really, I think, wanted me to lose confidence in myself and for me to feel crappy about myself. Um, and they didn't succeed. And obviously, those people aren't my, in my life anymore because if you have friends that do that, then maybe they shouldn't be your friend. I really highly doubt that, you know, the friends that were crappy to me in high school and in college like meant to teach me a lesson but they did um because if I didn't go through those situations like I would have never realized like what a good friend I am to the friends that deserve it I would have never figured out like what more I deserved in a relationship without going through kind of a crappy time like post being cheated on like I would have never known that if those things didn't occur to me. For instance, in high school, a way that I viewed like my confidence and the way that I viewed myself in like society and like whether I was like succeeding or not was literally like whether I could like get guys. That was like such a huge thing and like actually very just like not recommended. Like literally if you're like depending on your attention from guys as a way to like make yourself feel better then try to find another way to make yourself feel better so with myself in high school i literally was like determined to get college guys get like really any type of guy and not even like in a sexual sense just like more just like get their attention like have them be interested in me because that was like where I got my confidence from. Still kind of continued into college. I'm not gonna lie, like I still like really seeked guy guys like approval for me to feel good about myself. When I wasn't talking to a guy, I started realizing, wow, I can't really sit here and tell myself like what about myself I'm like happy with, which that was like kind of a weird time. And also I was immature, like, I was just thinking about guys I was thinking I was like boy crazy I mean I like that it was the literal truth behind it yeah I didn't really have confidence like true true genuine confidence just overall as a person I didn't have that until probably like this year year I literally stopped making men or dating or anything like that that wasn't a priority to me and it wasn't until I realized exactly why I wanted that attention. It wasn't because I thought that that made me worthy. It's not because I thought that that was like what was going to make me the best version of me. I wasn't doing it for the right reasons. I was doing it because I felt like that was where I got my most confidence was when a guy would compliment me or a guy would be interested in me or when a guy would like be chasing me like that was when I felt that I was the most confident <laughs> like you don't need guys to be constantly contacting you or DMing you or any of that just to be confident you don't need that and that was like a really big change in my life was when I realized that I am so content just by myself, like having time by myself. I can literally go a whole day without being on my phone and not looking at Instagram. Like I used to be so obsessed with like Instagram likes, getting Instagram likes, you know, being popular on social media. Then when I realized that really everything about social media, and this isn't like an anti-social media rant at all because like I like social media, I use social media. But it was like the moment that I realized like everything on social media, what I see and what people display is not real. That was when I was like, wow, like you don't need to keep pretending anything. Like you can literally just be honest. And I use social media as a way to be honest. I'm doing it right now. I'm literally going on camera, doing my makeup and talking about very honest things like what I've been, you know, scared of before, what I've been not confident in, what have I struggled with in the past. Like, I'm literally doing that, but I'm not trying to portray anything. I'm telling you the honest truth, and the honest truth is that I'm not perfect. No one on social media is perfect. No one 
in your life is perfect. Everyone goes through their struggles and everyone has insecurities, including myself. I don't need any, you know, anybody to tell me I'm beautiful. I don't need anyone to tell me that I'm a good person because I know that already. And I'm not even talking about like physical beauty. I'm talking about like, I think generally I try to do what is good in the world and I try to be the best person I can be and I think that's beautiful. It has nothing to do with my outside and I have struggled so long and for so like for so long about my outward appearance, specifically my body. I want to be known for being a good person, for being a good friend, a good daughter, a good sister, a good aunt, hopefully one day a good mom, you know, if I'm blessed with that. Like I don't ever want to be known for anything materialistic, anything that has to do with my body, anything that has to do with my face. Like when I'm no longer on this earth, I don't want people to be like, oh, she had really beautiful eyes, really beautiful lips or beautiful smile. And this was actually brought up to me when I was watching Raw Beauty Christie's um, kind of confidence video that she had. Her mother had passed away. She literally said that her mom was just so selfless, just so, just an incredible person, just cared so much about animals and other people. And so when she unfortunately passed, it wasn't that they were talking about how physically beautiful she was. They were talking about who she was as a person. I think about my own like grandma who has passed. Of course my grandmother was gorgeous. I mean, she's she was beautiful, but you know, that's not what my dad talks about. That's not what my mom talks about. She, they talk about what a good person she was. She, you know, spent her life she was a teacher and so she spent her whole entire life educating younger people which is so incredible and just like that is something we take for granted every day and you know she was an amazing mother and very caring and you know I just hope that people talk about me one day like my dad or my mom talks about my grandma and like I don't want to get choked up but that's I feel like what I realized this year was that I didn't need any of that stuff. I didn't need people telling me I'm beautiful. People didn't need to tell me about my physical attributes. I see a mirror every day. I want people to see me for me and see me for who I was as a person. I want my nieces and nephews to talk about what a good auntie I was, you know, how much I love my family and everything. Like, I don't need anybody to tell me that because I have lived my literal life trying to be the best family member, best friend, best coworker that to anyone that I meet. And, you know, I don't need anybody to tell me those things because I know that I am those things. Um, do I also know that I can get very sassy? Do I also know I can be extremely short and I lack patience? Of course. Confidence isn't just knowing the good things about yourself. It's also knowing kind of where, you know, I'm a Gemini. Like, listen, I get bored so easily. I know also the aspects of myself that, like, aren't as good. I have a lot of, you know, my anxiety can, like, manifest in really terrible ways and I can end up, like, being kind of the worst and when I don't mean to, like, but at least I know that. People that at least know the good and the bad and everything in between and they can be like, yeah, that's me. I'm trying to work on the bad, also trying to emphasize the good. Take a quick break, put my lashes on off camera, and then I'll be right guys. So I just popped a lash on. It's um, Baddie B lashes. I also was using the mirror. You can get this online. That's how I got it. Um, Baddie B lashes faux mink in the style baby doll. They're my favorite. The main goal that I was trying to get out of this video was pretty much going to show that like you don't need to be in the best shape of your life you don't need to be like in the most successful part of your life to have confidence like i am only getting started with my career hopefully 
you know, I'll be getting into med school and everything like that, like things will, you know, start happening for me in that aspect. Also not like physically, like body wise, like in the best shape of my life or like the most confident in my body. But that doesn't mean that I haven't made strides in becoming just an overall more confident person, like just a more confident version of myself than like I ever thought I could. I didn't need to lose a shit ton of weight or like, you know, really do anything that monumental. More just my mindset and how I feel about myself and how happy I am just looking in the mirror or not looking in the mirror, just how happy I am just with myself and who I am. I think I have some pointers you know you guys can take them or you don't have to really makes no difference to me but my first one and I think the most important one is and it's easier said than done is stop comparing yourself to everyone else don't do it I for so long for so long literally would sit there and talk to my sister Inas. I used to go to her about why, you know, more guys in high school didn't like me or why like the popular kids like didn't want to be my friend, like really stupid like high school stuff that like I feel like everyone has done. I used to sit there and like be like, oh my gosh, like I just don't have as good of a body as that girl. That girl can eat whatever she wants and I can't because blah, 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 blah. I wish I could like just not really have to worry about my weight or gaining weight. Still get into those moods. Like, I'm not perfect and I don't, I'm not trying to say that, like, I'm completely, like, I'm never going to have those feelings again. But, like, I used to just be so confused. Like, why couldn't I just be like that? Why couldn't I have been born with a model figure? Why couldn't I have been born with just, like, things just working out like physically you know to be the best healthiest most confident version of my body the way that I was born the way that I my genetics played out like that's more realistic than taking someone and being like I want to look like you it's not gonna happen some people have very similar body shapes or body types and like that's great but like you're never going to look the same I mean some people nowadays on Instagram are looking eerily similar but I think that's mostly like injections and surgeries but you didn't hear it here no point there's no point in comparing yourself when you are unique and you look like you and you are beautiful in that body and in that face like there is not one person that is born ugly without making themselves ugly by their actions like some of the most beautiful people that I personally know that I grew up with or I know like went to school with or college or what have you, some of them are beautiful physically, like gorgeous people, but inside, no. They're not good people and they're not beautiful people. Someone wants to spend their whole entire life seeking unrealistic expectations of what they'll look like or what their body will look like, or what their ass will look like, or what their <sighs> boobs are gonna look like, or their stomach. Like, if I tried to achieve a flat stomach, I think I would be literally just wishing and wishing for like years and years, and I'll just like never have one. That's just not really how my body is. Like, unfortunately, that's just not really how my genetics played out. I think the main, main thing that I did that got me to the point where I am now is I really had to take an inventory of the people in my life. So some people I, you know, had to have in my life because they were my teammate. I think I briefly talked about this because they were like my teammate or because they, you know, I was in classes with them or I worked with them. Like there are some people that
that I work with now that like I would be fully content with like never really having in my life and then there's some people that I have met through work that I'm like wow this is going to be like a lifelong person that I'm going to you know really love to have in my life moving forward. I think the best thing that I did was getting rid of those people that weren't gonna be there for me and that weren't going to be the best people in my life to have for me to be the best version of myself I can be. Like the person and the people that you surround yourself with are so important. They can either make you or break you. And um, I really had to do that and I had to realize that I am in charge of my own life. No one else is forcing me to do anything. Unless you are like a minor, <laughs> then you know, you can literally do what you want to do with your life. If you want to be the best version of yourself and yet there's someone in your life that is making that hard, then maybe the best thing is to not have them in your life. At the end of the day, the people that ride or die with you at the end are going to be the ones that I hope you will allow them to be in your life. Not that they're just passively there like if you have people that are just passively there that are just waiting to see you fail no that's not your friend that's not your partner that's not anyone you should have in your life and that was something I had to like come to the conclusion of people that were just trying to make my life more difficult yeah they're not in my life now and thank god Maybe don't inhale it. That's just like my general ending point. So here's the finished look, you guys. Um, I feel like I rambled a lot. I'm sorry if at points I was like kind of going off on tangent. My overall finishing point with this whole entire video is that you are in control of your destiny and there are reasons why certain things happen. There are certain reasons why things happened to me in college, in high school, in middle school. There were reasons for everything. There was a reason for me tearing my ACL. There was a reason for me choosing the school I did. There were reasons for my last relationship not working out. Like There were so many reasons as to why things happened to me. And the fact that I can confidently say that I am happy that those happened no matter how painful or tough they were because they made me me. They made me who I am today, which I think personally is the best version of myself thus far. I have to talk myself into loving myself all the time. Just I just don't want anybody to ever feel like they are not good enough or they were not given the right end of the stick or that they were put just on this world to fail. That is not at all. You can choose that. I really hope you don't, but you can choose to accept failure. You can choose to accept when shitty things happen to you or you can learn from them. Every single thing that has happened to you thus far has been a lesson. So I really hope that you guys take what I say I may be young and I may not know everything, but I do know this. You are beautiful. You will always be beautiful and keep working to be the best version of yourself that you can be. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm sorry that it got kind of like deep at times, but hey, this is what YouTube is. This is what my channel is going to be. I'm not going to hide anything from you as long as you guys give me the opportunity to show you myself and show you my true self. So, and we'll do makeup while talking about it, which makes it 10 times better. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you like my content. I will be posting pretty frequently now that I have all my equipment up and running. And yeah, have a beautiful rest of your day and night or where whatever time zone or time it is where you are. And I will catch you at my next video. Peace. Bye, guys.